Hello, uh, my name is Callum Wingrove. I'm an amateur astrophotographer based in London. Uh, I post a lot of my images on Instagram uh, under the handle at callum.wingrove. Uh, and recently I published a picture of the Rosette Nebula, which was just a test image for a new telescope. And I shot it with a colour camera uh, with a duo narrowband filter. Uh, and for fun I also posted a fake Hubble palette version of the image and uh, people asked me how I had done that um, so I did say I would try and put a demo together just to illustrate it now I use a piece of software called Astro Pixel Processor um, this is very good for stacking and it also has some basic image manipulation tools um, so I use it as part of a workflow um, between this software and Photoshop and Photoshop I use just for final tweaking um, of uh, saturation and things like that. Uh, but this isn't going to be an Astro Pixel Processor tutorial, it's just to illustrate what you can use the tool for. So if you're already using it and shooting with a colour camera and have a, uh, a duo bar narrow band filter um, and you haven't tried this, hopefully this is useful to you. Um, Astro Pixel Processor does have a demo license so you can download it and try it for yourself on your data if you're not currently using it. So anyway, hopefully this will be useful. Um, I'm going to start over here on the left hand side. This is uh, the workflow for Astro Pixel Processor. A lot of it is automated. Most of the time you don't need to touch the automated settings. As you become more experienced at it and you do things like mosaics and things like that, you may have to delve in here. but uh, for most of the time you don't need to to do very much um, so I'm going to start on tab 0 they number from 0 to 9 although 7 and 8 have disappeared over time uh, this is just describing the data I'm working with so um, I'm using a color camera with an RGGB Bayer matrix um, I can force the Bayer um, now what we're going to do here is this has been shot with a duo narrowband filter um, in my case it's the um, STC Astro uh, filter um, other people use the L Enhance or the L Extreme there's a few filters out there that do this but they basically isolate predominantly the wavelengths for hydrogen and oxygen so Astro Pixel Processor allows you to separate out those wavelengths from your color images that you've shot so I'm going to select under the algorithm HAO3 extract HA. Now I'm going to go into the load and load my data. Um, I'm not doing multi-filter processing or multi-session processing. Uh, and I'm going to load some, just a couple of light frames um, to act as a demo. Um, I'll just load one up here. Because I'm extracting just the hydrogen alpha, it's rendered as a mono image. So these are shot at Unity Gain. Um, this was the ASI 294MC Pro camera from ZWO. Uh, and there are five minute exposures. Uh, normally you then go and load your calibration frames in here. Um, I already have some masters prepared uh, for the sake of this demo. Load my master flats, master dark, master dark flat, and finally a bad pixel map. And I'm going to load, leave everything on automatic settings and just go straight to the integrate tab uh, and click on integrate. And I'm going to call it HA. So it's now going to run through everything. It should be quite quick because um, all the calibration is already done and there's only a couple of uh, images to integrate. Uh, so it's just going to finish normalizing and then do the integration and then I will be left with uh, an integrated output that represents just the HA data in these two frames. So it's already writing out that. Now, the reason I'm going through this process is so I can show you. I'm going to switch off that noise because it irritates me. Um, I'm going to show, show you how to get the oxygen 
and the proxy for the sulfur channel. So we're going to now go back to the zero tab and extract the O3. It's going to warn you. So just click on the warnings until they go away. Then click on normalize and renormalize the light frames. Once it's done that, you can just go back to integrate, click on integrate, and this time I'm going to call it O3. So this will now generate an integrated output for the oxygen. Now, obviously, with the Hubble palette, say normally a mono camera shot hydrogen, sulfur, and oxygen independently. Um, so here we're going to need to create a proxy for the sulfur. And we go back to the zero tab, and this time select HAO3 mono. Renormalize the lights one last time. And then once they're normalized, click on integrate. And for the sake of argument, I'm going to call it uh, S2. And that will then give us our final channel for this fake Hubble palette image. So having created these three integrations, we can go into Tools and combine RGB. And here we want to select one of these two um, options. I find Hubble 2 is a bit better. Um, and we're going to add our channels just stored in here. So HA, I will tell it it's the hydrogen alpha. And channel oxygen, again tell it it's oxygen. And add channel sulfur. Now I'm going to hit switch on the saturation. Now if I calculate this now, it's going to come out predominantly green because hydrogen alpha is mapped largely to green. So you need to play around with these uh, sliders here, principally the top slider for each channel, uh, and adjust them. Uh, I tend to also, because hydrogen alpha is the biggest part of this, I tend to play with the luminance, um, so we'll just see luminance 100. Um, and I'm going to reduce the hydrogen alpha down to 0 0.385, uh, increase the oxygen to 1.5, and reduce the sulfur down to uh, about 0.5. Now, I was playing around with these beforehand, so I kind of worked out what works for my data. You'll probably have to play and find slightly different settings for your data. But if I recalculate this now, it should come up with something that's much more akin to the um, Hubble palette. And you can see that you've got this yellow um, exterior with the blue of the oxygen in the interior. So that already looks pretty good. You can um, maybe lighten it up a bit uh, and darken the background um, but you've got something that's that's reasonably good so I can save that or save it as a standard file name um, I will just show you the light pollution removal because there is a, a gradient you can see it's kind of yellowy here and blue on this side um, now I would actually normally, if I was doing this properly, I would um, actually remove light pollution from each of my master frames, from the hydrogen, the oxygen, the sulfur, and then do the combine. But here for expediency, I've just done the combine. Um, but I'll just show you how to remove the light pollution if you're not familiar with AstroPixel Processor. This is one of its best tools, because um, it's very simple. You just draw some boxes on your image Try and avoid the nebula itself, but just so it can build a picture of um, the light pollution, and then just click calculate. And as you can see, it's normalized that, um, so you can just 
OK and save that. And you have your image, which again, you can play around with the brightness. And um, contrast and various other things. And when you're happy with it, you can then just save it as a TIFF file um, to export into other processing tools. I happen to use Photoshop, which is quite useful. Um, save it as sRGB version 4 and 16 bits. And that will then output that as a TIFF file. Um, Astro Pixel Processor does have some uh, color tools to adjust the colors. Um, I just happen to find Photoshop a little bit easier than using these. Uh, but hopefully that's been useful to you to see how you can go from um, a color image. Um, and if I go back and just set this to adaptive airy disk, I can reload one of my light frames. Hopefully that should be in color now. Uh, neutralize the background and you can see this classic HOO um, type image from this single light frame. Uh, you go from that to uh, a fake Hubble palette. Hopefully that's been useful to you um, and if anybody finds it interesting or wants to ask any questions leave me a comment below. Thanks very much. Bye.